everyone's favorite, the pulley problems, right? Most people don't really enjoy these because they can be a little confusing, but they're actually not too bad once you know the steps. So let's look at this one. We've got two cylinders here and it says we want to find the speed of cylinder B. If A is moving downward with a speed of four meters per second at this instant shown. Okay, so let's write down some steps that we're going to take. First step we want to do is figure out how many cables we have. All right, so that's the first thing we want to look at. All right, so how many cables are there? And second, we need to label a reference line. So let's do that. And then next thing we want to do and this tends to be the tricky part for a lot of people, is we need to figure out the lengths in these cables that are changing as the masses move. Okay, so that'll be our you know, third thing. So which lengths of cable change? All right, so we have some constant lengths, right? And then we have some that change. So constant lengths, or not lengths, but length, um, let's look at this. So let's say this is a pulley, right? And let's say it's this pulley here, for instance. Now it's got this cable going around it like this, right? Well, the length of the cable right here, that's always going to be constant, okay? That's not changing regardless of where, you know, B is. So and regardless of the velocity acceleration of B, this length here stays the same because that's the length in contact with the pulley. Now this length and this length here, so here and here, those can change based on our motion, okay? So if we just focus on the parts of these cables that are changing or you know, changing length, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's kind of walk through this and see how to do it. How many cables do we see? Well, I see we have one here and then we have a longer one right here. Okay, so we have two cables, two cables, and then let's draw a reference line. We want a reference line that is going to be uh, stationary, obviously. So let's just make this a reference line. Okay, because that pulley right here is not moving. It's fixed in this position. These two can move, right? So we wouldn't want those to be the reference line. So that's a good reference line. And third thing, we need to figure out which lengths of the cables are going to change, and then we're going to give those a variable name. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we can start with this longer cable, I guess. Now, if V is moving, or not V, if A is moving down, can this length here change? It can, right? So let's give that a name. Let's call it SA. Okay, so that can change. So this is moving down, it's gonna get longer, right? And then if that happens, what else is gonna change? What about this one and this one? These two are gonna change also, right? Because as this moves down, this cable here is pulling on the pulley, right? It's gonna to tend to lift it up, which is gonna change these two lengths. Okay, so I need something to basically kind of measure that length. So what we're gonna do is let's just measure to the center of that little pulley. And let's call that, uh, let's just call it SC. Okay. All right, so now we've got this. Okay, and we're gonna come back to this in just a second. So step four, after we label the lengths of cable that, can, that are changing, we need to come up with a equation that represents the total length. All right, so equation for the length. So let's do that. So let's call this cable one. And I'm looking at the lengths that are changing. So I've got this SA and then I've got these two right here, okay? So what we're gonna do then, our length here for cable one will be SA for right here. And then these lengths 
we're going to assume they are the same, so we'll put SA plus 2SC. Okay, so now we've got our first equation. Now what we're going to do is do the same thing for equa not equation, but cable 2. Okay, so let's look at that one. So cable 2 is wrapped around this one pulley. Okay, so looking at that, this length and this length right here can change. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically measure down to the center of this pulley. And we're going to call that SB. Okay. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, what about this one right here? But I'll show you what we're going to do for that. Because we want to pick as few uh, variables here as we can. We don't want a ton of variables because that makes it harder to solve. Okay, so now let's call this length 2. All right, so length 2 is going to be the length SB, which is right here. Okay. And then I need this little piece here. Okay, well, what do we think this length here is? That's what we need, right? So that's going to be SB minus SC. All right, so we're going to have SB minus SC. That is length 2. Okay. Now, once you get these equations, the rest of this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Okay, but getting these two equations is typically what is the hard part for students. But if you follow these steps, it'll make it a little bit easier. Okay. And after you do a few of them, you'll get the hang of it. All right, now what we're wanting is the speed of B. All right, so I want the speed of B. Now, how can we use you know, this set of equations to get that? Well, let's think about it. If I were to find the derivative of SB, what would that give me? Well, that's going to give me VB, right? So I'm going to use these, use these two equations. Um, we can simplify a little bit, and then we'll be able to take the derivative. Okay? So let's do that next. Now, I've got information for VA. I don't have anything for this little pulley here. Okay, which SC measures to. So if I could get rid of this SC out of these equations, that would be helpful. So let's do that. So basically we can solve equation one for SC and then plug it in here. Um, and then you know, we'll get rid of that. So let's do that step. So from one, let's go ahead and we can solve. So L1 minus SA over 2 is SC. And then now let's plug this into equation 2. So now we'll have L2 equals SB. And then it's plus SB, right? So we can just put a 2 here. Um, and then minus SC, which is this. All right, so now we've got that. And then we can go through and simplify it if we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this. We got L2 over here. And then let's bring this L1 over 2 over. So it's going to become positive. So a plus, and then it's 1 over 2, right? So it'll be 0.5 L1. And then that's going to equal 2SB plus, because it's negative negative here, plus 0.5SA. Okay. And actually, it might have been easier to solve this one for SC because you don't have to worry about the fraction. I just didn't think about it when I was doing it. Um, so now we've got this. Now what I want to do is I want this SB dot. Okay, well, we're just going to take the derivative of this equation. Okay. And it's going to be the derivative with respect to time. Now, L2, if I take the derivative of L2 with respect to time, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get 0, right? Because the total length for that cable is constant. That's not changing. Okay, so L2 dot, that's going to go to 0. And then, you know, we come over here. 
or 0.5 L1 dot. Same thing, L1 is not changing length, right? It's constant, so if we take the derivative, that's going to go to zero. And then we just keep going. Okay, so that's going to equal 2 times SB dot, right? There's that SB dot, which is velocity, that's what we're wanting. And then we're going to have plus 0.5 SA dot. Okay, now this SA dot, can we plug anything in for that? We can, right? It's at 4. Okay, and we're going to assume that down is positive since that's the motion here. So we're going to put in a positive 4. And then all we have to do is solve for SB dot. So we'll have 0 equals 2 SB dot um, plus 0.5 times 4, which is 2. That's meters per second. So SB dot then, this will move over, become negative. So we'll have negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1 meters per second which means we have one meter per second going upward. All right, so block B is moving up, which makes sense, right, because of the way the pulleys act. So as this gets longer and goes down, that cable here pulls this pulley C up, which then in turn pulls this mass B up. Okay, so that's how you go about doing that one. And hopefully that made sense. And I will see you next time for another problem.